Today on Fact Space, we're talking all about the Grim Reaper. Death is the inevitable other half to life, and it is something that every living being will have to eventually face. The concept of death and the afterlife go hand in hand, but unlike the certainty of living, death is shrouded in mystery. Even though we will all go through it someday, our understanding of what happens when we die is vague and confusing, and that uncertainty only grows as different theories spread. The Grim Reaper is a universal embodiment of death itself. Traditionally wielding a scythe and wrapped in black cloaks, the entity's role in the world is to take the life of a person and deliver them to whatever is next. For some, the idea of the Grim Reaper is merely an abstract representation of death, while others wonder about what this supernatural being will do with them, and even more people fear it. Today, we'll be breaking down the relative facts and theories surrounding the Grim Reaper and how the symbol of death appears in different ways. Death happens to everyone and everything that can be considered alive, and because of its prominent nature, it's no wonder that the idea of the Grim Reaper came to fruition. The being appears in religious and cultural beliefs as well as greatly throughout popular culture. Because of this, the Grim Reaper takes on many different appearances, roles, and identities. Starting with Greek mythology and dating back to the roots of the Greek religion, Thanatos is the formal name for this version of the Grim Reaper. Thanatos isn't given a concrete storyline like many of the other gods, goddesses, and beings throughout mythology, but what is known of him is that he is the winged son to the goddess of night, Nyx, and the twin brother to the god of sleep, Hypnos. Because of this unique family tree, Thanatos is described as being a peaceful bringer of death, who takes people who are at the end of their lives to Sharon, a ferryman who then guides souls to the god of the underworld, Hades. Their fates are then determined once they had traveled across two rivers, Acheron and Styx. Ironically, despite Thanatos being a gentle spirit, many of his siblings are characterized by their violent natures and gruesome capabilities to inflict unnecessary demises, which he would then have to deal with. In the Middle East, Mott is the name of a death-personifying entity similar to a blend of Hades and Thanatos, as he is described as being the god of the underworld and the god of death. Like Thanatos, Mott is not discussed in many texts, but he is worshipped by several religions for his role in Ugaritic mythology. In parts of Europe, the Celtic regions have several variations of the Grim Reaper. In Ireland, there are actually two different versions, the Dullahan and the Banshee. Instead of being a singular being, Dullahans are a supernatural race of creatures who are as shifty in their personalities as they are terrifying. With a creepy smile that can stretch from ear to ear and a horse-pulled carriage, a Dullahan's job was to park outside of the dwelling of a person who was to die. As soon as they spoke their name, the person would drop dead. But Dullahans didn't simply kill those who were ready to die. If someone was to discover the Dullahan and watch its actions, it would either mark them for death or use a whip to destroy their eyesight, destroying the peaceful image that Greeks had painted of death. On the other hand, the Banshee is a rare female variation of the Grim Reaper, who is portrayed either as haggard and sunken or with great beauty, as the Banshee chooses how she appears to people. They are distinguishable by horrible wailing noises that they make when someone has died. The Banshee also spans across Scottish lore, where several Banshees can gather at once to scream the death of an important individual. An additional part of Scotland's beliefs is that a dog, which can vary from black to pure white fur, would guide a ready-to-die soul to the afterlife. Whether all three of these beings work together or not isn't clear, but their independent roles could easily entwine. Similar to the Dullahan species, in France, the Bretons believed in Anku, a personification of the Grim Reaper that closely resembled what Reapers are said to look like modernly. Anku is not a singular being, however, and instead is a creature whose spirit thrives on the death of the previous person taken by Anku. The embodiment physically appears as a towering skeleton, whose head can turn in any direction to observe everything around it. Anku drives around in his wagon of death, piled high with dead bodies, to claim souls by merely stopping outside of their homes. On the other hand of things, in many Latin American cultures, skeletal beings wrapped in colorful attire represent the Grim Reaper. The Day of the Dead is an important Mexican holiday that takes place annually in order to support families who have lost members and to commemorate the dead. Sugar skulls, which are skeleton heads decorated colorfully, are largely used throughout the three-day holiday and have a similar depiction to the deity Santa Muerte, also called Our Lady of the Holy Death. The traditional Grim Reaper appearance may not be claimed by every region, but there's a reason it's so popular. The Reaper in Poland takes on this conventional appearance. However, the female entity is cloaked in white instead of black. 
Although the Grim Reaper also varies in its definitions of good and bad, many Slavic countries believe that the personification of death retains names that are too similar to that of the devil. Because of this, the Grim Reaper is also looked at as a satanic being in some cultures, as opposed to a gentle guide. In Scandinavia, the Grim Reaper eventually became characterized physically with a classic black shawl and scythe, but before that, Norse mythology painted a much different picture. Sharing a similar name with a form of the afterlife, Hel is the goddess of death. Hel was typically described as a hag-like woman who was usually associated with the Black Plague. As it swept through, if she carried a broom with her, it was a sign that everyone in town would be killed by the plague. But if it was a rake, death would only select some people to die. In India, death is described as being less macabre and more of a state of complete rebirth. King Yama is known as the Lord of Death based on Hindu beliefs. Unlike the traditional black carriage ensemble, Yama rides a buffalo of the same color and lassos souls with a rope. When a soul is brought to him, deities called the Yamadutas, who serve King Yama, take the soul to be evaluated for all of the right and wrongdoings in life. King Yama is also prominent in Chinese lore by the name King Yan instead. This is shared throughout other places in East Asia, such as in Korea where he is called the Great King Yamna, in Vietnam where he is called Diem La Vuong, and in Japan as Great King Enma. Other deities in Asian mythology are also associated with death, such as a fiery goddess called Izanami who swears to take 1,000 souls with her every day, and a psychopomp, a creature whose job it is to guide all beings to the afterlife when they die. In addition to being found in many different cultures around the world, the Grim Reaper is also discussed throughout various religions. Some Abrahamic religions, Catholicism, Islamic, and Judaism all feature their own forms of death's personification throughout their texts. In Catholicism, the Book of Revelation describes the four horsemen of the apocalypse. These four beings are described as representing pestilence, famine, war, and death. According to religious texts, the four horsemen are associated with the Day of Judgment, when Jesus is meant to return surrounded by angels, as is believed in many different religions. Death is the fourth horseman, and the only one who is provided with a formal name, shared with the Greek personification of death, Thanatos. Although the fourth horseman does not carry any type of weapon according to texts, some artwork shows him with a scythe, while others describe him as being followed by Hades. Additionally, Michael, an archangel who appears in more than one of the Abrahamic religions, is depicted as the angel of death in Roman Catholicism. His job is to lift souls to heaven after they have left their human bodies, not to be confused with the angel Samael, whose duties as an angel of death are questionable. In Islamic texts, the term angel of death is used again, as the angel of death, it's Azrael's job to take the soul of a person who is going to die and lead them on the path to the afterlife. Depending on how they had chosen to spend their lives, the person's soul will preview different visions. Due to the strong Islamic belief that death is just an extension of life rather than an end-all, the way in which death occurs is an extremely descriptive event in many texts. In Judaism, Mawaith is the name of the personification of death who is described as an angel in some texts, but as a devil in others. Derived from the Hebrew word destroyers or slayers, Mamitim are deities who would kill people that had gone unprotected by good angels, depicting them as negative forces rather than positive guides. Cultural and religious Grim Reapers aren't the only ones that exist, however. Their histories have set guidelines for the eerie characters that appear in many forms of pop culture. Some manifest within the scythe and black robe stereotype, while others are new creations that have evolved over time. The reason that the Grim Reaper is used so favorably among storytellers in everything from video games to film series is due to the fantastic storylines that can become of the personification of death. An age-old plotline used by many different people is the concept of cheating the Grim Reaper out of claiming the soul of someone who is meant to die. Through this, the Reaper may punish the person who saved the soul, or even take their own life, depending on the story. The Grim Reaper is also featured in other forms of literature, such as The Godfather Death, a dark fairy tale from the Brothers Grimm in 1812. The Grim Reaper has also been featured in films and television as early as the 1920s, such as in the movie Destiny, a silent film that follows the story of a woman whose life entangles with death when she wants to reach her dead partner. Popular sci-fi television series The Twilight Zone also incorporated death within its eerie fantasy meets horror storylines as early as 1959. From then on, the Grim Reaper has been humorously incorporated into adult comedy series, such as South Park, Family Guy, and The Simpsons, and more terrifyingly in horror shows like American Horror Story. 
Between the traditional roots of the personification of death, the modernized cliché of a cloaked reaper with a skull face, and the ingeniously created adaptations that have persisted since then, the story of the Grim Reaper continually grows throughout history and pop culture.